we live at, an, at a time where a post-human paradigm shift is occurring. So a radical reconceptualization of how we see ourselves as human beings. So traditionally it was humans possessing the divine spark, and that was valid from Plato up until Kant. And then with Darwin, we started to rethink who we are and how we want to be. We, we realized that we don't have an essence, but we can reconceptualize ourselves, we can create ourselves, we can enhance evolution. So in the past 2,000 years, we basically saw ourselves as being, being the God-given creatures, the ones who possess the divine spark. We are the ones who possess dignity. Only humans possess dignity. And that's no longer a plausible approach. Since Darwin, at least, we need a new conceptualization of who we are as human beings. And that has an enormous amount of implications for all aspects of our life worlds, from the arts, to economics, to ethical questions. And that's basically what I'm concerned with. I was brought up, you know, in that Christian Catholic understanding, and I just realized, you know, there's a tension with what I understood in, in physics. I can't get these things together. And so I was, I was totally lost. I didn't know, where are we? How did we get here? What's gonna happen after this? Maybe I should try to become the Pope. That's the only way to really increase the likelihood of me reaching a blissful afterlife, you know? And if I wanna do something, I wanna do it properly. So either becoming the Pope or moving away from it. And, and I took seriously all these questions. And there was not, not anyone I could talk to. And that's what made me turn to the thinkers. When I was 13 in Hamburg, I went to an antique bookstore and I picked up a book by Heraclitus with his, his fragments. And luckily all of the fragments of Heraclitus were commented on by philosophers, Plato, Goethe, Spinoza, Nietzsche. I thought about these comments and then basically it was Nietzsche who was my educator because then I picked up Nietzsche's book and he became my intellectual educator because I felt at home in his writings, having a discourse with Nietzsche. Later on also Dostoevsky was extremely important to me and I, I love this psychological way of thinking about the world, about other people. And both Nietzsche and Dostoevsky you know, made me understand the importance of psychological complexities, of the hidden motivations of human beings, which I find utterly fascinating. Plato, on the one hand, is the one who basically, he's an ancestor of, of this dualistic, humanistic, Judeo-Christian tradition. It's a very dualistic and paternalistic way of thinking with a very clear separation, you know, between this is the body and the mind, rationality, emotionality, and that leads to all the problematic, discriminatory implications. The afterworld, the sun in Plato, that's identified with brightness. And the people in the cave, they live in darkness. So we already got racism being justified. You know, the whiteness is being superior, is close to the sun, being dark, being in the caves, that's inferior. So we've got what racism is basically part of Plato's cave. Then the next step is, um, you know, Again, in Plato, you've got rationality. Rationality leads you to the sun, leads you to generate the insights. Then on the other hand, the body, the emotionality, is something which is to be rejected because it undermines our central insight. And women are being identified being emotional and man with rationality. And here we lead to, to sexism. And it, it has further implications with rationality being exclusive to humans. And that leads to speciesism. And so he will see the various implications of discrimination already being a strong part of our Western cultural tradition. So Spinoza and Nietzsche are the ones who are trying to propose a monistic, a non-dualistic account, a relational account, where we are fully part, we as humans are fully part of this world. We are in a complex, organic, relational 
process of permanent becoming, there is no more stability. There is no more essence. We are all just permanently changing in all respects. That undermines the possibility of, you know, getting knowledge and correspondence with the world, of having any stable essentialist insights too. And, and that undermines the possibility of making clear even good evil distinction. And that, of course, leads to a lot of challenges and problems because it undermines this binary thinking in which we've all grown up with. That's why I took, you know, Nietzsche always as my, as my central reference point because his way of thinking, his, his processual, his non-essential, non-foundational way of thinking sort of undermines the structures of our Western worldview. It's actually for anyone who embraces a sort of a skeptical outlook, a naturalist outlook, who cherishes plurality, who cherishes freedom, who cherishes, you know, social liberal versions of democracy, they should embrace transhumanism. That's the only way where we can realize a flourishing future whereby we can consider the great plurality of different approaches. And actually, it also takes sustainability into consideration because it's a, another way of how we conceptualize ourselves. It's no longer the human hubris where we see, you know, we as human beings are the ones who possess the divine spark. This makes us godlike creatures and that's what allows us or justifies why we are superior to the rest of the world. And that's the wrong way. That's a highly implausible way of conceptualizing ourselves. Instead, transhumanists start from the premise that we as humans only differ gradually from all other natural beings. And that has implications concerning how we treat the others, the rest of the world, the animals. It, it, it really needs to rethink completely what the moral status of animals should be. So a, a central transhumanist claim is personhood for non-human animals. And that means, so personhood sort of, and personhood means the entities which you should respect should not only be humans and exclusively be humans, but it should also apply to some animals which possess like self-consciousness who are particularly prone to suffering. That's why, you know, the best brains of our generation need to get together and think through and work through what it means that we are, you know, fully integrated in this world and um, what would be the legal implications for that and what would be the implications concerning how we deal with gene technologies, brain-computer interfaces, digitalization, what should be the meaning of, of digital data. Ask yourself, you know, what are my bodily desires, needs, and passions which make me feel alive, which give me high chinks, or which, you know, make my life being fulfilled, which make me happy in some way. And it's very difficult to find that out because we live in sort of so many higher order desires and sort of desires which are created by society. You know, you should take the job with more money. You should go to an institution which is more prestigious. And it's very difficult to free yourself from that social and cultural norms. And social media doesn't necessarily help. They actually promote that kinds of, these kinds of understanding too. It is important. So is it, why am I doing what I'm doing? Where do I pl plan to work? Which food do I want to eat? What is actually, do I do this because it's, it's like social prestige is being identified with eating meat? And that's, that's been the case. Then you need to separate yourself. You, you see the higher order demands, you should do that. But then to realize what you actually, what is more strongly connected to your drives, to your effects. And that can be extremely difficult to find out. And that might be the most important issue for oneself to, to, to make that separation between sort of what is a culturally established norm and what is something which, you know, which your effects demand. And so the questions concerning your climate and nutrition and or who you're friends with, who you're surrounded by, these might be the most philosophical issues to deal with. <laughs>